The second challenge to expression is from the platforms themselves, including us. Because the, the reality is, is that we make a lot of decisions that affect people's ability to speak. Now, I'm committed to the values that we're discussing today, but, but we won't always get it right. I understand that, that, that people are concerned about how much control we have over how people communicate on our services, and, and I understand people are concerned about bias and, and making sure that their ideas are, are treated fairly. And frankly, I don't think that we should be making so many important decisions about speech on our own either. You know, we'd benefit from a more democratic process and clearer rules for the internet and, and some new institutions. So that's why we're establishing an independent oversight board for people to appeal our content decisions. The board is gonna have the power to make final binding decisions about whether content stays up or comes down across our services. And these are gonna be decisions that our team and I cannot overturn. And we're gonna appoint members to this board who have a, a diversity of views and backgrounds, but who each hold free expression as a paramount value. Now, building this institution is important to me personally, because I'm not always gonna be here. And I wanna ensure that these values of voice and free expression are enshrined deeply into how this company is governed. And the third challenge to expression is the hardest because it actually comes from our culture itself. We are at a moment of particular tension here and around the world and we are seeing the impulse to restrict speech and enforce new norms on what people can and cannot say. And increasingly, and we're seeing people across the spectrum try to define more speech as dangerous because it may lead to political outcomes that they see as un unacceptable. Some hold the view that since the stakes are now so high, they can no longer trust their fellow citizens with the power to communicate and to decide what to believe for themselves. I personally believe that this is more dangerous for democracy over the long term than almost any speech. Democracy depends on the idea that we hold each other's right to express ourselves and be heard above our desire to always get the outcomes that we want. You can't impose tolerance top down. It has to come from people opening up, sharing experiences, and developing a shared story for our society that we all feel like we're a part of. That's how we make progress. So how do we turn the tide? Well, someone once told me that our founding fathers thought that free expression was like air. You don't miss it until it's gone. When people don't feel like they can express themselves, they lose faith in democracy and are more likely to support populist parties that prioritize specific policy outcomes over the health of our democratic and civic norms. I'm a little more optimistic. I don't think we need to lose our freedom of expression to realize how important it is. I think that people get it and, and understand and appreciate the voice that they have now. And at some fundamental level, I think that most people believe in their fellow people too. And as long as our governments respect people's right to express themselves, as long as our platforms live up to their responsibilities to support expression and prevent harm, and as long as we all commit to being open and making space for more perspectives, then I think we're gonna make progress. It's gonna take time, but I think that we're gonna work through this moment. We overcame deep polarization after World War I and intense political violence in the 1960s. Progress isn't linear. You know, sometimes we have to take two steps forward and one step back. But if we can't agree to let each other talk about the issues, then we can't even take the first step. So even when it's hard, this is how we build a shared understanding. So yes, we have big disagreements, maybe more now than at any time in recent history. But part of this is because we're getting our issues out on the table. Issues that for a long time weren't talked about enough. More people from more parts of our society now have a voice than ever before, and it's gonna take time to hear all these voices and knit them together into a coherent narrative. Sometimes we hope 
uh, for a, a singular event to come along and resolve these conflicts, but that's never been how it works. We focus on the major institutions, our government, the large companies, but the bigger story has always been regular people using their voice to take billions of individual steps forward to make all of our lives and our communities better. The future depends on all of us. And whether you like Facebook or not, I think we need to recognize what is at stake and come together to stand for voice and free expression at this critical moment. I believe in giving people a voice because at the end of the day, I believe in people. And as long as enough of us keep fighting for this, I believe that more people's voices will eventually help us work through these issues together and write a new chapter in our history where from all of our individual voices and perspectives, we can bring the world closer together. Thank you.